there, welcome to episode 5 of the Knitter Next Door podcast. My name's Angela, or Angie B, and you're joining me in a fairly sunny Mansfield in Nottinghamshire, which is centrally located in the UK. I live here with my husband Richard, Richie B, uh, and our two sons, Aidan, who will be 13 next week, and Ezra, who is currently having his nap, he's going to be two next month. We've got two naughty Bengal cats who are both fast asleep over in that direction. And we have a silly Staffy who we rescued from a shelter around about seven or eight years ago. She is uh, joining me here today. She's on the settee next to me. So there's Bernard. Say hello, everyone. No, I'm not going to. They can't make me. Fair enough, Bernard. Okay, so yeah, that's Layla or Bernard, depending on uh, yeah <laughs> what day it is and how stupid we're being at the time. <laughs> okay, I wanted to say um, a huge welcome to anybody who's new to the podcast and to any returning viewers, welcome back. Thank you very, very much for joining me again and uh, spending some time with me. On social media, you can find me as Angie B underscore 79 on Instagram, that is, and on Ravelry, I am Angie B. <laughs> That's the dog snoring. Angie B 1979 on Ravelry. So then, moving straight into finished objects. I am wearing the finish for this week. Um, this is my Tenya by Caitlin Hunter. And I just want to uh, stand up and show you this properly. So you can get the full effect. I can get a little bit higher so you can see the lace. There we go. I've not blocked it yet, um, but this is a, a cotton acrylic yarn that I've used. So, um, to be honest, it didn't really matter that much. And the lace is already sort of sitting fairly open anyway, although I'm sure it will look probably slightly neater once I've blocked it. But you can see um, the gradient actually is maintained all the way around. This was a complete pain in the backside to do. I'd not really quite realized how much I'd uh, bitten off as I did it. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that I've not woven in any of my ends yet because I have about a billion of the things so um, I've left those for now but I thought actually it might be interesting um, in a minute what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap outfits and I'll show you how I um, kept the gradient because I just merrily cast on and thought oh yeah that'll look really lovely in that yarn and completely didn't think what might happen um, yeah so anyway right then so quick change um, just in terms of what was behind this, um, I've had Tenya in my library for quite some time and been sort of looking at all the various different ones that everyone else has been making and, and really enjoying those. And uh, definitely I wanted to cast it on at some point, but um, I didn't see it in my immediate future. That is until I met two lovely ladies on uh, Instagram one girl called Tiff, Tiff Nealon, and a lady called Nikki Corder, who um, runs uh, Forest Fibre Arts Yarns. And um, they were sort of doing a, 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 a knit along for, for Tanya. Um, and yeah, they kind of bullied me into joining it. <laughs> so I did. Yeah, because it takes like loads and loads of arm twisting to make me do a new cast on. I think um, without that extra little push that they gave me, I might not have done it just yet. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I cast on on the 24th of July and I finished it on the 30th of July. So I was so chuffed with this thing. I really, really was. The yarn that I'm using is by um, a company from the Netherlands called uh, Schepjes and it is actually a gradient yarn. It's 60-40 uh, cotton acrylic um, and I'm just going to hold this up so that you can actually see that, that gradient properly. We'll start here. It's called Watermelon Hell Razor. Okay, and you can start either from the outside or the inside of the cake. Um, so you could have done um, the orangey colour at the bottom or the black at the bottom. I chose to start from the outside. What I have found actually, I've knit with this yarn before, and it is that if you start from the inside, you can end up with a bit of a, a horrid tangly mess towards the end. So I would recommend to anyone that was doing that to just kind of wind it up first the other way rather than necessarily trying to use it as a, a center pull or at least if you're going to use it as a center pull do it for about half of it and then do yourself a favor and wind the rest of it along so that you don't end up with it all collapsing in on itself um, but anyway I'm going to shut up about that now and just carry on about tenure so um, 
what I will say is it is the most enjoyable knit that I have knit in a very, very long time. Still got all the ends to sew in, but actually, if anything, I thought that might be useful just to kind of show you in terms of it will help explain how to maintain the gradient. As I said before, I completely did not think about what might happen. I thought, oh yeah, we'll cast on, we'll do it, it will change colour for me and it'll be merry. Yeah, that's all very well and good, except you're knitting in the round until you get to here. <laughs> and then you actually knit the front and back as two separate pieces. Um, without giving too much away, um, that therefore means that you have to really think very seriously about how to maintain the gradient on the front and back. And I have to say, I had to really sort of put it down and have a good think about what to do. Um, because it wasn't, in my noobishness, immediately obvious to me how on earth to to do it um so in the finish up it sort of had a bit of a, a flash of inspiration and i decided um the the color change they're very subtle but they happen about once every probably 12 rows or so through this section um and so basically it was just a case of trying to maintain that sort of 12 rows and if i'd not um obviously i hadn't finished the next colour change once I was just knitting on the front after I'd done 12 rows. So what I would do is leave the front and then go and knit those 12 rows on the back and then keep going and then knit on the front. What I did as well was when I got to the end um, of the colour change was I just kind of wound wound off what I hadn't used um, and then proceeded to the next and the next and the next. It's dead obvious to see um, when the colour change is actually in the ball. You can knit the changes through quite, um, quite discreetly. I'll just pop some footage in here. So yeah, that um, that yarn, it, it's quite sort of fluffy. It's very discreet in terms of the, the final knitted product. You can't particularly see it. You can see it if you know what you're looking for, but you wouldn't really notice it, I don't think, if you weren't specifically looking for it. Um, but yeah, that made it very easy to spot where the colour changes were, um, to wind off the extra bit that was left and then proceed to the next change and the next and the next and the next. What did become apparent to me um, as I worked up even further was that, oh my goodness, okay, so we've got the front and back bit sorted out, but now we're gonna have to split off again for these bits that come up and over the shoulders. So again, it was a case of doing the same thing, just knitting um, that amount of rows with the next color, stopping, going on to knit with the same color everywhere else and just winding it off into little balls. The end product of which is, an whole host of ends that I have to weave in and this is my absolute favorite job in the whole world I must say which is why they can actually just bite me they can stay there I don't care <laughs> so anyway there we go those those ends aside I am really really pleased with how this turned out I don't know that I would actually be bothered to knit it in a gradient yarn again although I do absolutely adore the effect I have to say I think it came out really really nicely the um, the lace is amazing to do and it goes really 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 quickly and it's only done over you know quite a short repeat so if you put your stitch markers in it's really quite simple to not particularly go wrong or at least if you do spot that you've gone wrong you spot it quickly um, you're looking at 20 cent uh, 20 centimeters 20 stitches on a repeat so um, yeah put plenty of markers in and just uh, use those to check what you're doing each time you go round and it's dead easy then to, to fix any mistakes so when you're knitting with this yarn there's not a lot of give it's pretty solid it's not going to stretch um, so that's great that's fine and it gives a lovely structured and textured appearance to the stitches and everything else however um, when you're trying to do a knit four together, it's blooming painful. 
<laughs> so that's the other thing just to note is that if you're using a fiber that's perhaps a little bit less stretchy a bit less forgiving um you might end up with sort of slightly sore fingers from doing some of those um you know more extreme knit however many is together um other than that though um i mean that's a minor thing it, you know it's not like it's impossible to do i did them and i did them perfectly happily and easily um it's just that it's it's a little bit um a little bit harsh on your hands to do that standard knitting it's a whirl it's a dream this stuff it's a whirl oh my god pun not intended um it's um it's really soft uh i wish i wish i could kind of let you have a feel of this through the camera um it is so so soft really really lovely um to work with so anyway yeah it's it's one it wasn't in the plan it's just something i pulled out of deep stash this is a yarn that i've used for several other items in the past and i just sort of saw it and thought i love the color you know what let's give it a go nearly said let's give it a whirl um and uh, and see what happens i don't know if i would do it using a gradient cake again i love the um the color but i did not love the process of maintaining that gradient on the front and back to get it to not be all mismatched and, and bizarre with the rest of the top um what i did do as well um this particular colorway this watermelon hellraiser has this really bright pop of orange at the end and i really wanted to try and make sure i got to the orange and now i didn't have enough fabric to work my way through all of those different colors um, um, so what I did was through this orangey bit there are a couple of the colours where you don't necessarily see the change as much mm -hmm. as in some of these more stripy bits down here so I thought what I can do is, is easily just wind off a few of those sections um, I don't think I've got any that I can show you but I just wound a few of those sections off entirely and just skipped to the next section along um, and so then when I got to the very, very end, I'd, I'd kind of skipped as much as I dared um, without leaving massive sort of lines in it. Um, so I just I completely wound off right to the very, very end to get that pop. And I constructed the, um, the, the, the collar um, with just the final color in the, in the ball, just to give it that pop um, that it needed to balance off against the black at the beginning. So I'm happy with it. I am very, very happy with it. I don't mean to sound like I'm not. It was just a little bit fiddly, a bit of a pain, but entirely of my own doing. Had I chosen just one yarn or two yarns, say one for the lace and one for the rest of it, that would have been no problem at all. It was only because I was using this gradient that it made it just that little bit more tricky. Um, I had to think about what I was doing around here, but yeah, it's all a learning experience. Um, yeah, and overall, very, very, very happy with it. Doggy snoring at the side of me. Um, just another couple of bits about um, my tenure. Um, and that is that, yes, I have decided to... <laughs> I've chosen to knit this um, without sleeves this time round. The gradient was really putting me off trying to put sleeves in it. But then as well, it's really, really light, really open and airy as it stands. And I thought, you know what, this is a perfect summer top. Um, so what it really doesn't need is, is sleeves of any kind anyway. Um, so I decided not to not to bother knitting those on um, and then yeah it's an excuse to make another one because um, I can make one with something a bit warmer um, that makes a bit warmer fabric and have it again for, for autumn and, and do one with the sleeves yeah I'm, I'm so so pleased with it in terms of gauge um, the gauge I was getting was definitely uh, tighter than suggested in the pattern for the fabric that I wanted um, but that said the um, the fit of the top um, as it's actually designed is probably not the sort of shape that I tend to gravitate towards anyway I, I like um, clothing that's just that bit more fitted um, so I still I stuck with the uh, the extra small and my my gauge which was something around about the um, 28 stitches to four inches um, mark with this yarn um, so there we go so yeah that's my tenure I think what I'll do is I'll just pop that back on this I've weighed, um, it's 150 grams um, that I've used to make it and I did knit the body quite a lot longer um, than the pattern suggested. I think it was supposed to be sort of cropped at, at waist height so I've knit quite a significant amount actually extra onto that just because I preferred it to fall a bit lower down. Um, 
if anything, it was really just so that I could make um, the most of the gradient and, and use as much fabric as possible, but without spoiling the look of it. So uh, yeah, there we go. I'm really, really pleased with it. Definitely recommend it. The other thing um, that sort of happened whilst I was knitting this was um, that I noticed at one point, um, what I'd done was I'd actually not caught every single strand of the, uh, or every single ply of the yarn as I'd made a stitch. It was about probably 10 stitches below where I was working. It was just a single stitch and it wasn't that bad, but it was enough to really bug me. So um, I, uh, I just, I wanted to insert a little bit of footage of how I actually went about um, rectifying that. It was literally just a case of sort of pulling it back and then picking up that strand with um, the bits that I'd missed and then, and then pulling it back up the ladder that I created. Um, I think working on my Lauren Elkin piece gave me the confidence to do that because I kind of, you see um, the effect of unraveling stitches and actually what you left behind with. It's really not that scary. But I do remember when um, when I was little, when I first ever learned to knit, um, being really off put by sort of, you know, if you dropped a stitch, it felt like the whole thing could unravel and that there was just nothing you could do about it. So really just wanted to put a little bit of footage in just to show you that actually, if you do notice something like that, it's not the end of the world. You can just rip it out. Um, like just down one line of stitches to pick it up and, and pull it back up again and you can't see you can't see where I did it and it, it cured the problem so that was that And that's how I cured it. So that was that. Okay then, so if anybody did fancy um, joining in the uh, the Tania Cal, it's still running. It's been going since the 20th of July, but you've got till the 20th of August. All the, uh, all the details are available in the uh, Ravelry group. So it's Forest Fibre Arts Ravelry group. But what I'll do is I'll pop a link in the, uh, in the description box and uh, you can click on that and, and come and have a look and come and say hi. Um, so a little bit more about this yarn then. Um, so yeah, Scapius is the company. It's um, Whirl. The colourway I used was Watermelon Hellraiser. I love the names of these things. They're all sort of um, cake and um, sweets based uh, and sweet things. And so you've got names like uh, yeah, Turkish Delight, Key Lime Pie, and, and the, the colours are, are absolutely amazing. I've used um, two of these before and I have two or three in my stash still. Um, you get a thousand meters in a cake, so you get plenty to do, you know, quite a big uh, project at a time. Um, I've seen, you know, beautiful stuff knitted and crocheted with them. I first came across Scrapius, um from when I was crocheting. Um, it was one of their yarns, it was their Cotton 8 that I made my Sophie's Universe from. Um, that was the big sort of multicolor blanket that I held up in episode one. Um, but what I have done is I've brought another couple of um, finished objects from last year just to show you um, other things that I've made from this same gradient yarn just because I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I do really like it. So this first one is a um, crocheted shawl and this one is called the Lost in Time shawl. It was really quite popular last year. I think literally everyone was making one in the crochet world. It's a completely free pattern. Um, you just hop on over to uh, Miho Crochet. And there it is. I think it really, really shows off the gradient mm -hmm. so nicely. I will say as well, when you are crocheting with this yarn, any um, of those joins are far, far easier to, uh, to actually hide in your stitches. You can't see them at all. I think on the knitted fabric, um, you may well have sort of noticed a couple of places on mine, like there, where you can kind of just see it. I, I think if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't particularly notice it, but it, it is there. And, you know, as the knitter, you probably see it and, and notice it more than, than other people around you. Um, but in the crochet, I, I'm damned if I can find any at all. 
Um, so yeah, this is uh, the Lost in Time shawl. Not really got a great deal more to say about it other than um, free pattern, absolutely gorgeous. I love wearing this thing. Absolutely wore it to death last year. I think it looks absolutely beautiful on. So that's that. Um, this one, what was the colorway? This one, Lavender Licious. Lavender Licious. Um, so that's that. And then just to show you again, another example of this as a knit um, item. I've got another one here. This um, this is in the colourway Green Tea Tipple. This is another free pattern um, and this was something that I found um, just browsing Ravelry. I'll put the name of the pattern here because I can't remember it and I've not written it down. But yeah, this was designed in, in Cascade um, yarns. Again, the, the name of the lady escapes me that, that designed this pattern, but dead, dead easy, dead, dead satisfying, really nice um, variation. This sort of, um, you've got different charts to follow for the lace panels. Um, and it's, they're, they're all variations on a theme. That they're essentially the same um, pattern, but much, much, much smaller versions of the lace. And then there's a medium version and then a large version of the same lace. And it's just so satisfying to do the way that this yarn is because it changes so gradually um you kind of you, you you knit in the way that you sort of go oh i'll just go to the next change i'll just go to the next one with this shawl as well it was like oh i'll just finish this panel oh i'll just finish this next lace bit oh i'll just and um, by the end of it you've got oh goodness knows how many stitches there were along here but it was a lot look i can't actually show you I can just about uh, hold my arms wide enough to show you the whole thing. Um, but you know what? It, it still flew. It really, really flew by. I added on this extra lace panel at the end because where I'd got to hadn't shown up the darkest um, transition of this particular gradient. And I wasn't happy with that. Sorry, my camera just stuttered a little bit. It's getting a bit hot again. Um, so yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure that we got all of the gradient and I didn't particularly want to wind any off for this one because I think it would have been a lot more noticeable. Um, so yeah, I just stuck an extra bit of lace on the end, which was dead easy to do because you have the charts, you just fit them in, um, to the amount of stitches that you've got. So lovely, lovely pattern. I would definitely, um, recommend this to anyone. Um, and certainly I really, really enjoyed making it in this yarn. I think it came out beautifully. It's enormous. Um, so it's got a great drape as well so you can kind of just wear this however you want it it looks lovely as sort of granny style over the shoulders or this is how I would sort of tend to wear it but it's yeah it's, it's really really nice so yeah I just thought it was nice to uh, to give you a couple of examples of other things that I've knitted with this same yarn I'll say this this particular shawl I absolutely love um, and it, it looks nice in lots of different ways so yeah, that's that. Other works in progress then. Um, progress from, from last time I saw you. I've got this one behind me. I'll just um, hold this up. I think last time, yeah, I was talking about my hand dyes and stuff like that. So I believe I will have got to here. So I'll put another four squares on there. Um, this one is Prism Yarns. I'm not sure of the exact colorway. What I'll do is I'll just, I'll look it up and, and pop it up there. Um, this was one that I've, I've knit a, a shawl for my mum in. This was just the, what was left over. Uh, this is Arctic Fox, a Madeleine Tosh, um, Merino Twist Light, I think. Um, this was the lighter section of my All About That Brioche scarf that I showed, or shawl that I showed in, I can't remember which episode, but I have, I have lifted it up and shown it before. It's, um, see the little shawl that she's wearing it's the adult size version of that um so the lighter color in that was this one this is the lighter color from my born and raised knits um sabrina junk top and this is some of the leftover kettle yarn um from my um cowl that i was wearing in the last episode so yeah that's that i won't dwell on that any longer you don't need to sit through that every time 
I realise that I've had these guys sat in the background, or at least two of them, in more than one episode before, um, and I've never actually spoken about these patterns. Um, this one, it's by Mary Jane's Tea Room. I'm just going to pop this silly shawl off, then you can get a better look at her. Hello! Uh, it was such a lovely knit, really, really nice to do, and I think she came out all right. I think probably I might make a better job of the face if I was to sort of try and do it again. Um, but yeah, I did, I did my best with it, and I think it came out all right. The, um, the skirt is removable, and um, you'll see actually underneath, I made a sort of quite hmm, risque knickers and <laughs> turn around. She's got a butt. <laughs> and I don't know why I find that quite so funny. But apparently today, I do. I don't know, I think, is it the yarn fumes? Maybe, I don't know. All right. So anyway, Mary Jane's Tea Room. These bears are lovely to make really really lovely to make the pattern is so thoroughly put together with so many um photographs and written explanations of exactly what to do i would say if, if you wanted to make um a little toy um that yeah you would go and have a look at the stuff that she's done because they're they're excellent they really really are um and yeah if you're a bit better at putting them together than than i am then you might get one that doesn't look quite so much like it's been in a car crash but there we go. I like it. So she's going to sit there and um, model her, her shawl like normal. I'll just pop that back on. The other one to show you is just this one, which is a little zebra out of the Edwards Menagerie book. Um, I think I bought him as a kit from one of the sewing um, festivals that I went to at the um, NEC Arena in Birmingham one time. So this is a book by um, Toft, uh, Kerry Lord is the, the designer, um, and this is knitted in, in the Toft alpaca that it's suggested. Um, I think this is the small, all of these patterns you can knit in small, medium, um, large, and I think extra large variants as well, um, just by changing the, the gauge um, and the yarn, etc. But yeah with him not got a great deal to say about him it was just to show you who he was or she was hello and uh, yeah that's that the cactus <laughs> yeah I think we're, we're just not we're not gonna go there that's that was it was something in a magazine many many years ago I, yeah you know what bye okay I've just got to go and fetch something so I thought I'll leave you with Bernard just while I go. You can keep your company. the progress then my deco drape is living inside this bag here so that's the second installment of the um, West Knits yarn along for 2018 so for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about that is this one here so the West Knits yarn along it's a three installment club that's been going on since June this year you had to sign up much earlier on in the year my husband bought me a subscription to it for my birthday thank you Richie B um, but yeah each month June July August we've received a package um, and this was the one for last month um, the yarn is from a company called Skein uh, it's hand dyed in Australia and um, yeah, here we go. I'll just get this out and show you. Is this, and this is where I've got to. It's actually, oh goodness. You know when you sat with it, you don't really notice quite what progress you've made, but holding it up to the camera, I can see 
that's loads different to last time. I think last time the whole thing was probably about that big. I've done about that much on one of these sections, but there are three of these now, and the middle one is looking more like that. So yeah, this is this has grown somewhat. I'm on about row 90, I think. I've got a good couple of hundred stitches across now, so each row is taking a while. Um, I've reached a part of the pattern where it's just um, a repeat now of the same sort of few rows. And I think I've got about uh, 16 or 17 repeats left to go um, of you know building this same pattern up on all three of these sort of stained glass windows, would you want to call them? Um, to be able to get to the, the final colour. So what will then happen is you'll make um, a contrasting border in this third yarn. But yeah, happy with that. Um, I'll just kind of pop that round my neck and give you an idea. It's really, really nice. Really, really soft yarn. It's lovely to work with. The pattern is really, really interesting as well. Probably it's not the most what you might refer to as TV watching friendly potato chippy and knitting. It's really, really not. It's enjoyable and it's very interesting. And there are sections where you can kind of just, um, you know, stop thinking and just go um, into plain uh, garter stitch there. But um, yeah, I'm still at a stage with it personally where I'm having to really concentrate on what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm doing things wrong, not maybe putting these little garter bits in the right place, maybe not putting the make ones in the right place and stuff like that. So it does, it takes a bit of concentration. For this one, I'm better off if I'm not trying to um, listen to a podcast at the same time. So it's not my favourite knit in that respect because there's nothing more I like than to sit and listen to other people talking about their knitting whilst I'm doing my knitting. Just um, whilst I'm on the subject of this bag, um, this, as I said before, this is one that I've made for myself. This, um, the fabric is something that my mum gave me years and years ago that I just had um, sitting around in a cupboard. Um, the inside is, is made from an old pillowcase. So this isn't something that you could um, get hold of. Certainly I don't make and sell these things at all. It's not what I do. Um, so this was purely made by me for me. However, um, what I noticed in her most recent episode was pineapple knit. So Marina, um, she has begun making this exact bag. Um, well, not this exact bag. <laughs> she's not made this. Um, but she's been making bags using this same pattern um, from Indigo Bird Knits. So if you wanted to pick up something that looked just like this, um, you could go to Marina's shop. Uh, so she's online as Pineapple Knits. And um, yeah, you can, you can pick up bags in this style from her now so yeah pineapple knits podcast if you've not already checked it out do give it a, a bash she's a lovely lady um i just find it's a nice kind of soothing um half an hour 40 minutes or so every week i really look forward to, to spending a bit of time with her every week so my other whips that i've mentioned before um are my meshy twist my um this one, this was the first part of the, the West Knits uh, yarn along. I've not actually put any extra knitting into that one at all since you last saw it. Uh, the other one would be my uh, Like a Cloud cardigan by Hokey Locatelli. Uh, I haven't picked it up at all, I'm afraid, since the last time. But I do plan on working on it between now and the next time. So, uh, yeah, really on that one, all I was doing was, uh, was working on the sleeves. For anyone that's completely new today uh, if you wanted to have a look at that be worth skipping back a couple of episodes um, and where I talk about um, like a cloud in more detail the last episode I showed it I've finished um, the whole of the body I've just literally got to pick up and, and knit the sleeves and then I will be finished um, but yes I didn't fancy a trip to that particular uh, sleeve island this time so I haven't worked on it I'm afraid but I will I absolutely will I've got my mojo back somewhat since last time we spoke I have a little bit of stash acquisition. Um, one thing just arrived in the post yesterday. I popped this on Instagram already, but this is the third instalment of my West Knits yarn along. Um, so this time round, it's three skeins of La Pianemi. Um, I don't know if I said that right, La Pianemi. 
whatever. You know who I mean. Yeah, that's what they looked like before I massacred them <laughs> but this is what they look like now and they are soft and they are squishy and I really love the color it's so subtle this time instead of being all rah colorful yeah these are more muted and I really like them so I don't know what I'm going to be knitting yet I've no idea I think I will be finding out next week um, so yeah you'll get to find out next time if you're interested have a look on um, Instagram if you want to find out beforehand it'll be it'll be released as soon as um, the pattern comes out there'll be pictures all over Instagram you'll see it um, so the the tag for that is the West Knits YAL 2018 so West Knits yarn along but yeah that's the yarn uh, merino sport 325 meters in a hundred grams so that's 355 yards and it's a hundred percent merino um this blue one is the color more pastries please uh this one is called cafe knitting and this one is called tea time so yeah that's um that's something really interesting to look forward to so the little extras that came this time were just a little um blank notebook there and the little patch that you get to sew onto one of your project bags. I quite like those. I like that it's pink. You never guessed that I like pink, would you? The cat is roaming at the moment. She's being naughty. She's unusual for a naughty Bengal. Okay, so I have one other little bit of stash acquisition that I just wanted to show because I really, really like it. And that is this skein of yarn from Jinx yarns uh, that came with a contrasting mini. I love this. This is going to be some Christmas socks for me. And it will be officially the most expensive pair of socks on the planet, unfortunately, because I got stung with customs, VAT, post office, handling fees, shipping and everything else that could possibly have got stuck on that was without of the control of the lady that sold it to me. Um, but yeah, literally everything that could have um, gone wrong did. However, it's going to make a beautiful pair of socks. <laughs> and they will then be framed and put on the wall rather than worn. Um, but yeah, I love it. It is very, very nice. Um, this, sorry, just to tell you a little bit more about it rather than just go, I love it, it's nice. Is um, the Glitz sock uh, self-striping. So that's uh, her 75% superwash merino 20% nylon 5% stellina base um, it's 438 yards in 100 grams I really like it it's very very soft very very beautiful the color is gorgeous look you look at this there are little flecks of green and pink and bright pink and then little surprising bits of sort of yellows in there and greens and it's gorgeous I've got no regrets um it's just cost a lot of money and more than I was anticipating really um you kind of you know that you're going to get charged um when you're importing things sometimes you keep, keep your fingers crossed that maybe they'll they'll let this one go because that has happened to me in the past um, but with this one, not only did they not let it go, they decided that they were going to sting me for everything. They possibly could sting me for. It's a bit off-putting, really. It does kind of make you think twice about ordering stuff from overseas, unfortunately. But there we go. I'm happy-ish. Other crafting, then. Um, at the very, very end of last episode, I mentioned this project here. Oh god, the cat is trying to run away with my knitting. No, stop it. You evil little cow. She had got that in her claw and was running away with it. No. That's very naughty, kitten. That's very naughty. 
So right at the end of the last episode, I briefly showed you a little rug hooking kit thing that I bought at um, Yarndale in 2014. And here it is. That's the little tool that came inside it. It, it kind of looks like a crochet hook. And what you do is you use this just to pull um, this kind of yarn through like a, a hessian type fabric, just hole by hole. You've got a little key here that shows you all the various different colours involved in here and then yeah away you go just pulling it through one hole at a time and that is where I've got to now. It's starting to look quite a bit neater actually than it was um, the last time I showed you. Ignore these little bits here they just need trimming down to the correct length. This is when you start an end of thread you just kind of start with a slightly longer length on the front there but that all trims down. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's quite um, quite nice to do, just something a little bit different. You can see I've not really um, done a great deal on there. I've not picked it up that many times, but um, I just wanted to show you where I was with it. So that's that one. There's just the one other craft, really, that I've been uh, doing in the last couple of weeks. And um, that is a form of needlework. And um, basically what I'm going to be making is a biscornu, kind of um, a pin cushion really, but I don't think I'd particularly want to stick pins in that. It's more just a, an oddity, something that's uh, quite cool uh, to construct and to look at and just to use as an ornament really. Um, but yeah, this is a kit by a lady called Sue Hawkins. She has a website and she makes all sorts of beautiful, beautiful things. Um, they're all in kit form. You can get um, like scissor keeps, um, needle minders, um, lots of biscornu, there's various different um, cruel work, pictures, all sorts of things. Seriously, if you've not heard of her, you've not seen her and you like your needlework, do check her out online because she has just some of the most gorgeous things, really different stuff to what I'd ever seen before when I, um, when I first found her at a needlework exhibition. So anyway, this is the one I've been working on and um, yeah, you make it in 15 different squares and I've just done the first one. Now that looks like you can kind of see through it. It's actually a mirror. This is something I've never ever done before, this particular technique. Um, it's called a, a shisha stitch. Um, and basically you sort of do a stitch that is weird. You do like um, almost a spider web around the outside um, of this mirror and then kind of blanket stitch it on over the top. The background is stitched first and then this is done over the top. And I tell you what, I had such a nightmare um, getting that to work. I had to do it about three or four different times before I was finally um, able to sort of get it to, to, to look right. Um, it's not the sort of thing you really want to be putting in and, and ripping out either. Um, but anyway, it's done now. Um, Put a link to a tutorial um, that I found that was really, really helpful showing me how to do this if anyone is interested. Um, it's quite cool, quite a different technique, something I've not tried before. I realise embroidery is probably not everybody's bag, but um, for anyone that is interested in, in crafty stuff, do have a look, it's quite cool. This, um, this little needle minder here as well, this is, again, it's something by the same lady. Let me just show you. It's um, got a piece in the front and the back there, and that just is magnetic. It's really quite powerful. Um, magnets inside here but yeah again that was embroidered in the same sort of fashion over canvas and that just holds my needles there are another couple of kits of hers that I've finished there are a couple of biscornu somewhere but I'm not sure where they are but I've also got these ones that I could um, easily find this um, is a scissor keep um, she does this in, in all different colors you can you can get um, various different designs and things. This was the one that particularly spoke to me. Um, oh, gosh, I think it's it's probably maybe five or six years ago that I made this. So I've, it's been kicking around a while. Might even be more than that. I don't know, you know. Um, but uh, it's it's just a square, and you you seam it down one of the edges. So it perhaps it might look more complex than it actually is. It wasn't that difficult to do, but it did take me quite some time. And then the other one is this little scissor fob here. Uh, it's actually got little beaded bees on it. And you use little like lazy daisies to make their wings and little French knots to make these flowers in the garden. And 
It's really, really cute. And then on the back it says, plant some flowers. So I was pleased with those, really, really pleased with them. And I just thought I'd show them to you with me having been working on this one. But there we go, that's those. Just to quickly mention as well, this um, this was a frame that I bought from Sue. Um, she sort of hand upholsters these these wooden frames. My other embroidery I do in um, Q snaps, but um, this particular canvas um, I thought might be easier um, pinned to to one of these these upholstered frames. And just I thought the whole thing was pretty as well. Um, so that's that. I have this then um, on on my lap, um, sort of over the edge of the settee, and I can get to the bottom and the top. I, I, I work with one hand underneath and the other hand on the top and a decent light <laughs> shining down on it so I can see what I'm doing. So that's it then. I, uh, I'm off on holiday a uh, week after next and um, I'm going away for a fortnight. We're going to be taking a tour um, in a car driving around California. We are going to San Francisco and from there we head off to Lake Tahoe down to Yosemite National Park. Uh, we come back across to the coast to uh, Carmel, Monterey Bay. Uh, then we're going down the coast. I think it's um, Santa Barbara, Pismo Beach. And then finally, we're gonna be in LA for three nights. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. If anyone's got any recommendations of yarn shops along that route anywhere, let me know because uh, I'd definitely be uh, in the market for picking up some hand dyed or something whilst I'm out there and not having to pay all the import fees and customs and excise and everything else. I just have to smuggle it back in the country in my suitcase and say, no, nothing to declare. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to, uh, to podcast before we go and we're going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Um, the dog is going to go and live with Auntie Steph, so that's my sister, for a little while, and she absolutely loves my sister, so don't worry about her. The cats are going to be staying here. My parents live directly next door, though, so they're going to be popping in and looking after the cats for anyone who might be concerned about the welfare of my animals whilst I'm away. <laughs> Thank you very, very much indeed. I hope you all have a lovely few weeks. Really, really enjoy the rest of your summer. Um, as I said, I'm not sure uh, if I'll be back now before September. Anyway, you take care and uh, it's been lovely once again and I will see you as soon as I possibly can. Bye now.